What's going on, YouTube? So we have our first legendary Pokemon on the channel in the form of the Pokemon God Arceus. Looking at its stats, base 120 across the board, easily the strongest Pokemon on the channel. And for Gen 1 purposes, its 600 base stat total would top Mewtwo's 590. Unfortunately, its starting move pull is both good and a problem. We start with Seismic Toss. Good because Brock won't be a problem and it deals neutral damage equal to our level. The bad? Well, it deals damage based on our level, and considering Arceus is in the slow level up group, this will be a big problem for the foreseeable future. And we don't know what moves we learn by level up in this ROM. So you already know, we're going to have to do a bit of training in Viridian Forest. I'm going to take on all of the bug catchers, and by the time we get to the mandatory bug catcher, I don't have any seismic toss left, so I have to use struggle. Which isn't a bad thing, considering that Arceus has 120 base attack, tied with Hitmonlee for the fourth, fourth highest in Gen 1. So, that's not a problem, and as far as the Brock battle, yeah, Brock's pretty easy. It takes four seismic toss to take down Geodude, and really you just don't want to take too much damage from it. Onyx takes five seismic toss, and it locks itself into rage, and this one's close thanks to a lucky crit. Before leaving Pewter, I stock up on potions at the market, because Seismic Toss only has 20 PP, so I know I'm going to be struggling, literally, against the trainers on Route 3. As far as the trainers on Route 3, we're gonna fast forward to the last one, this mandatory bug catcher. He actually gave me a few resets. Just because struggling against him, literally, the recoil damage added up quickly. We can fast forward to the Super Nerd in Mount Moon. Um, I can say that I did reset when coming into Mount Moon because Arceus can't learn Water Gun, so I didn't want that time loss, but we see here, Grimer disables my only move in Seismic Toss. So it's a struggle, literally, on the rest of his Pokemon. The Voltorb goes down in one shot, and even though this battle is close, due to taking some damage and getting poisoned, we get by it. There's no Mount Moon timestamp this week. I either forgot to record that part, deleted it, I don't know. I recorded this run six months ago, so we're just going to fast forward to Rival 2. Due to being in the slow level up group, we're only level 13 going into this. Pidgeotto is a 5 hit KO with Seismic Toss, and it gets off a sand attack and a few quick attacks on me before it eventually goes down after we miss a few times. Abra's next, and it goes down in 3 Seismic Toss. It can't attack me, which is great. We level going into the Rattata, so we're doing more damage with Seismic Toss, and it's also a 3-hit KO, thankfully. It just goes for Focus Energy and a weak Quick Attack. Last is Bulbasaur, and it puts me on a timer with Poison Powder, and with a move like Takedown on it now, it's a double knockout, and you know that's a reset in these. And I left this part in because it gives us our Mount Moon timestamp in a way. You saw we're at 30 minutes going into this fight, and I use my two rare candies to level up just to get some added damage on Seismic Toss. And this second battle goes much better. Pidgeotto is now a 4-hit KO as opposed to a 5-hit KO, and he even uses Whirlwind a few times just to not attack me as much. And per usual, Abra is a 3-hit KO with Seismic Toss, as is the Rattata, so we can just move on straight to Bulbasaur. I get off a Seismic Toss, and it puts me to sleep with Sleep Powder. It then hits me with Vine Whip and Takedown, the second being the more dangerous of the two. By the time I wake up, I'm down to 4 HP. I go for Seismic Toss, it uses Poison Powder, and we can get off another Seismic Toss for the win. And the trainers on Nugget Bridge aren't too bad. There is a bit of a time loss because I do go back to the Pokemon Center and heal because, well, Seismic Toss only has 20 PP, and I want to be able to, you know, not damage myself with Struggle which there is an elixir I can pick up on the way to Bill's house, but this hiker that guards it, yeah, Machop has low kick and he makes quick work of us. I do eventually get by him, I didn't record the winning battle, but our next obstacle is the last before Bill, and this one is a struggle, literally. I have to use struggle on all three of her Pokemon, and even though I get low on HP, they're all one-shots. We can go ahead and take on Misty now. We're at 57 minutes in-game time, and for this first battle against Misty, I decided to try Struggle Strats. Struggle does over half to star you, and it hits me with a weak water gun, even though it crits. It's only two struggles to take it out, but star me hits me with a crit bubble beam, and Struggle looks like it's a four-hit KO on it. 
but we don't get there, Hydro Pump takes me out. I decide to heal my PP up for round 2, which was a better call. Seismic Toss is a 3 hit KO on Staryu who doesn't bother attacking me, and thanks to leveling up after knocking it out, Starmie is a 3 hit KO who I'm actually speed tied with. We can fast forward to the SSN from here. I didn't bother picking up Body Slam because Arceus can't learn it, and I was pretty pissed to learn that. I actually saved outside the SSN and reset, so the in-game time wouldn't affect me too much. But just like with most opponents, with Rival 3, we're gonna be using Struggle. Pidgeotto is a 2-hit KO and we level up after it going into the Raticate, and we crit and one-shot it, and Kadabra's also a one-shot, but we're left with 11 HP for Ivysaur, so one struggle knocks us out from recoil. And I do have an elixir that I can use to restore my PP with Seismic Toss before the second battle, which Seismic Toss is a 3-hit KO on Pidgeotto, and it doesn't attack me, leveling up once again going into the Raticate so we can do more damage with our Seismic Toss, and it hits me with two Hyper Fangs to bring me to a quarter of my HP. Kadabra is next, and it's a 3-hit KO with Seismic Toss, but while it's on its last sliver of health, it disables it, allowing me to use Struggle. And I have plenty of HP for Ivysaur, so we can withstand the recoil damage, knock it out, and we can just move on to Lieutenant Surge. And just like all the fights you've seen so far, it's Struggle time. I go into the fight with two Seismic Toss left, which aren't enough to KO Voltorb, so we have to use Struggle to knock it out. Against the Pikachu, it's frail, and Struggle one-shots it, I don't think the crit mattered, but Raichu, it's bulkier, and Thunderbolt takes us down to where we can't withstand recoil damage. So once again, I use a PP restoring item before trying again. Seismic Toss is going to be a 3-hit KO on Voltorb, and we can just move on to the Pikachu. It gets off a Growl and a Quick Attack after going down to 2 Seismic Toss. Raichu is last, it's a 3-hit KO with Seismic Toss, and while its second Thunderbolt does crit, the Electric Mouse can't get 2 wins on the Pokemon God. And the best part about winning this battle is we have a new attacking move that we can teach Arceus in the form of Thunderbolt. But now we have a new problem, in the form of the Wrapping Lass east of Cerulean, and she's known for statusing you and then annoying you with Wrap. Thunderbolt isn't very effective against all her Pokemon, and Seismic Toss can't one-shot them. While Oddish does put me to sleep after I Seismic Toss it, it just hits me with weak acids and we knock it out after 3. Bellsprout comes out, and statuses me with Stun Spore, and then puts me in Wrap. And at this point, I just decide to reset. And I'm not going to show every try against her, but I had 4 total resets. In this attempt, I get put to sleep again, Oddish sprays me with some acid, and then Seismic Toss knocks it out. The second Bellsprout comes out, and Rap hits me, but it's two Seismic Toss. Next is the second Oddish, it statuses me with Poison Powder, which means I can't be hit with Stun Spore, and the last Bellsprout just doesn't have the attack power to do away with the Pokemon God, so Arceus can make quick work of it. And it's Return of the Self-Destructing Hiker this week, but I'll keep this one brief. His Pokemon don't blow up on me, and it's just 9 Seismic Toss to get through all of them, so we can move on to Celadon. And while in Celadon, we get access to some new moves. We can get Fresh Waters for Ice Beam, we can go get Psychic from Mr. Psychic and Saffron, and then we can make our way to the game corner to take on Giovanni. And with our new moveset, Giovanni is no problem. Both Onix and Rhyhorn go down to one Ice Beam, and Kangaskhan is a 3-hit KO with a combination of Ice Beam and Psychic. With the Sylph Scope in hand, we can go ahead and battle rival number 4 now. Ice Beam and Thunderbolt one-shot both Pidgeotto and Gyarados. Against Growlithe I go for Thunderbolt, doesn't one-hit it, it goes for Roar which can't affect me. And just like Growlithe, Kadabra goes for Teleport after I Thunderbolt it, one more takes it out, and Ivysaur is taken out by a super effective Psychic. Once I complete the Pokemon Tower, it's time to head to Sylph Co. There's two very important items here, but before getting them, we're gonna take on Rival Fievel. And you saw we were at 2 hours 6 minutes, so Arceus is definitely making some good time. Pidgeot is the lead, and one Thunderbolt takes it out. We level up to level 32, which we're pretty underleveled for this portion, but that's the slow level up group for you. Anyways, Gyarados went down to one Thunderbolt. Growlithe hangs on from both a Thunderbolt and Psychic and hits me with back-to-back -back flamethrowers before going down. Alakazam is next, outspeeds me and disables the move I chose, Thunderbolt. I try Seismic Toss and Ice Beam, they're doing about the same, and I get hit with Psybeam to bring me to 36 HP. 
It misses Kinesis and goes down. Last is Venusaur, but we get a critical hit Psychic to get the one shot. And as I've mentioned in this video, this run was recorded over six months ago, so I don't remember my exact thought process here, why I did things this way, but after beating the rival, I backtracked to floor 7 to pick up TMO3, Sword Stance. From there, I head to floor 10 to pick up the Carbos, the Rare Candy, but most importantly, TM26, Earthquake. I put Earthquake on our moveset before taking on Giovanni, and he's easy, per usual. Psychic one-shots Nidorino and Nexus Kangaskhan. Earthquake does about half and it locks itself into Rage. I switch to Psychic, isn't doing as much, and another Psychic takes it out. Next is Rhyhorn who goes down to one Ice Beam, and last is Nidoqueen who goes down with a super effective Earthquake. And now it's boss rush time. We're going to pick off the remaining gym leaders one by one starting with Sabrina. Both Kadabra and Mr. Mime go down to one Earthquake, and next is her most annoying Pokemon, Venomoth. I go for Earthquake on this thing, and it doesn't one-shot it. She heals it to full, and I hope for a better roll, I don't get it, and it confuses me with Psybeam. I hit myself as it switches to Signal Beam, but I get through with a Thunderbolt to knock it out and last is Alakazam. It hits me with a big Psybeam, but Earthquake does about three quarters of its health. It starts to heal up while I'm hitting myself with confusion, but I get through and get a massive critical hit Earthquake for the win. Now it's time to take a trip down Cycling Road to head to Fuchsia City, where we can pick up the remaining HMs of the run and take on the Ninja Master himself, Koga. And I'll spare any narration of this battle. It's a one-shot sweep with Psychic and Earthquake. We can just move on. After heading through the Safari Zone, I backtracked to Celadon because I did forget about Erika, but being that we're 10 plus levels higher than all of her grass Pokemon who are weak to Ice Beam, I think you see what's happening here. It's the same as what happened to Koga. It's a one-shot sweep. We can move on to Blaine. And as I'm re-watching this footage, I must have recorded this while listening to the J-Rose soundtrack, because I just hear the music he uses in his videos that I've obviously removed and muted from this one. But, like with Erika and Koga, Earthquake gets us the one-shot sweep on all of Blaine's Pokemon, so we can just move on to Giovanni in Viridian. Saving in front of Giovanni, we're at three hours on the dot, and Giovanni, just like Erika, Koga, and Blaine, is a one-shot sweep with Ice Beam to complete the boss rush of the remaining Kanto Gym Leaders, as Arceus is flexing its deity muscles. Now it's time for the pre-league rival battle, and you'll see we're at 3 hours, 3 minutes in game time. Arceus is looking like it's gonna finish in the A tier, as long as we have no setbacks. So let's get into the rival battle. Pidgeot is the lead, and it's one shot with Thunderbolt. I don't think the crit mattered. Rhyhorn is next, and one Ice Beam takes it out. Next is Gyarados, and Thunderbolt also one shots this thing, so 3 up, 3 down. Next is Growlithe, it's weak to Earthquake, it's one shot. Next is Alakazam, and it withstands an Earthquake, but it's just going for Recover so we can knock it out. Last is Venusaur, and I should have just gone for Ice Beam because Earthquake's not very effective, but it just goes for Petal Dance and we can knock it out the next turn. And that's it, Arceus is off to the league. Outside of Lorelei's Chamber, we're at 3 hours 12 minutes, so we're poised to have a sub 330 finish, but maybe even make it 325? Let's find out. Lorelai is first and her lead is Dugong. Thunderbolt is not enough to one-shot it, and Aurora Beam doesn't do much to me, lowers my attack but badge boosts the rest of my stats and we take it out. Cloyster, it's one-shot with Thunderbolt, and Sanqui Slowbro hangs on and hits me with Water Pulse. Thankfully it doesn't confuse me and we knock it out. Jinx is next, I go for Earthquake, and it does about half. It retaliates with Body Slam and another Earthquake knocks it out. Next is Lapras, her ace. I go for Thunderbolt, does over half, it misses its Water Pulse, and Thunderbolt knocks it out. So Lorelei, down. And normally, we speed up the Bruno battles, but in this run, we won't be doing that. Because watching back the footage and watching this Bruno battle, I said to myself, wow. And you'll see why. Let's just skip past the first Onyx that goes down to an Ice Beam and go straight to the Hitmonchan. So when I generate these runs, I follow what Gym Leader Matt calls the Chansey Rule for a Pokemon special stat. Taking the higher of the two, and while it buffed a Pokemon like Hitmontop back in April, what I didn't account for is that it also buffed Trainer's Pokemon. 
like Bruno's Hitmonchan, who normally has a terrible base 35 special and the elemental punches. But now, it has a very good 110 special with the elemental punches. Almost like the Gen 4 God Pokemon blessed it with a physical special split for its terrible moves in Gen 1. And as a result of all this, Hitmonchan hangs on from a Psychic, and retaliates with a hard-hitting, critical-hit Thunder Punch that leaves Arceus paralyzed. And the pain doesn't stop there. I get hit with a critical hit fire punch, I'm fully paralyzed, and a critical hit thunder punch that leaves me with 5 HP before I'm able to knock it out only because Bruno used the next defend, which he does on Hitmonlee as well, and Psychic takes it out. But because we're paralyzed and on such low HP, Onyx is able to clean me up with Dig and knock Arceus out. Imagine Bruno being like Goku, and actually beating Beerus in a battle. So what do you say we bring Bruno back down to Earth? I'm not gonna reshow the Lorelei battle because it was a lot easier than last time. I just used some rare candies before the Elite Four this time, and all of his Pokemon were one-shot sweeps with either Psychic or Ice Beam. And next is Agatha, which having Earthquake is going to be a much better option than Psychic for her Ghost. Her entire team is a one-shot sweep with Earthquake, except for Golbat who goes down to one Thunderbolt. And next up we have Lance, and we have Ice Beam and Thunderbolt. Arceus just has all the tools for the league. Lance's entire team is a one-shot sweep. Dragonite, we do get a 1 in 256 miss with Ice Beam, but it just goes for Barrier, and when our next Ice Beam hits, we win. And Arceus, on its second time through the league, all it took was a few rare candies for it to really dominate. All that's left is the champion. After the Lance battle is where I'm gonna say goodbye to Psychic and hello to Swords Dance. I really could have probably gotten rid of it before the league, but like I said earlier, this run was recorded six months ago, and I don't really recall my thought process back then. So let's see if Arceus can dominate the champion. I certainly think it can. We all know that the champion leads with Pidgeot. I'm gonna go ahead and set up Sword Stance. It uses a weak wing attack. I set up another Sword Stance, and it mirror moves it. At this point, I just wanna knock it out with Thunderbolt. Don't want it getting off a strong sky attack or anything. We knock it out. Alakazam is next, and with two Sword Stance, it's not gonna stand up to an Earthquake. That's two down. Rhydon is next, and with our boosted Sword Stance, it also can't stand up to an Earthquake. Three down. Gyarados is after that. It's four times weak to Thunderbolt, and it can just get out of here. One shot sweep so far. Arcanine, Earthquake, it's weak to it. Five one shot sweeps. We level up going into Venusaur, but with four boosted Swords Dance, it can't stand an Earthquake, and it goes down. The champion's entire team, one shot swept after setting up. And that's it. The Pokemon God has done it and made its way through Kanto. But I know all of you are wondering, what was its final time? Well, Arceus finishes at the lowest level, level 55 for these challenges on the channel, with a final in-game time of 3 hours 22 minutes. Not a bad finish for the first legendary Pokemon we've done on the channel. I think for tierless purposes, I'm gonna put it at the very top of the A tier, even above Meganium. Even though Meganium finished the game 30 minutes before it, Arceus, once it just got to that mid-game, it just dominated, and it didn't struggle with the League at all. Even though we couldn't do minimum battles with it, it I just feel like it was way better than Meganium. And I have a new organized tier list. I actually have the link to the Google spreadsheet in the description of this video, and now all of my videos, and for the future. They do contain spoilers for Pokemon that haven't come to the channel yet, so view at your own discretion. Anyways, thank you for the continued support on the channel. We've got a new Let's Play in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga starting tomorrow, along with another Generation 4 Pokemon coming later this month in Darkrai. And I can't wait to get more of these Sanqui runs out this summer. Although there is one Gen 1 Mon that I've had my eye on that'll probably come out next month. Anyways, as always, thank you for the continued support and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.